You know, you can have all the traps in the world, but if you don't have any place to set traps, then that doesn't do you a whole lot of good, right? And uh, depending on where you're located, you know, uh, in some parts of the country, public land is very readily available. And uh, so, you know, having a place to trap is not as big of a concern. Now, being said, now public land's got its own uh, set of challenges and, and things to consider. You know, one of the biggest deals with public land is, uh, you know, anybody's got access to it. So your potential for trap theft or catch theft definitely is, is uh, larger than if you're on private land. Uh, but particularly in the South, where, I, where I'm from, uh, you know, you're dealing with a lot of private land. And so, uh, you know, unless you've got your own, you know, personal land or, uh, you know, you're in a hunting lease or something like that, then you've got to go ask, ask for, for uh, permission and get permission from landowners. Uh, and so, you know, there's a couple ways. You, first off, you've got to know who to talk to, right? So there's a couple ways to go about doing that. You can go to your county um, tax office and look up the plat maps and get ownership, uh, landowner names, and usually address. Don't usually get a phone number, but you can get an address. Uh, also, a lot of that information is now available online too. If you just search uh, your county uh, and tax assessor website, so-and-so county tax assessor in Google, it'll pop up their, uh, their website and usually they have a, a search feature. A lot of times it's through a, a website called qpublic.net, but you can go through and, and uh, access landowner information through there. You can either search by street name, address, tract or parcel number and uh, or map so you can just find take the map and, and scroll around click on individual um, land holdings and it'll it'll tell you the landowner and like I said then you're gonna get you know address you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get a phone number uh, but you know that being said in my experience you know face-to-face -face contact is a lot better you know if you're if you go knock on somebody's door you're a lot more likely to get permission than just calling somebody up. It's it's one thing. It's real easy to blow somebody off on the phone, but in person, if you present yourself and uh, you know you're not offensive, then uh, you know you have a lot better chance of, of getting permission. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a second. So you can do it online through Google, search for your county tax assessor's website. A lot of times that's through QPublic, but you can find it that way. And there's also some apps on your smartphone. Um, there's a, a couple that I know of called Land, one's called Land Glide and another one's called uh, Onyx Maps that actually give you, and, and you have to pay for those, there's a subscription fee, um, but those are good, uh, good ways to get landowner information, especially on the fly. You know, if you're riding around and you see a good piece of property that you're, you're interested in and you want to know who to talk to, you can pull that up real quick and, uh, and get ownership information like that. So I'm sure there's plenty of other apps out there. Those are the only two that I, uh, I'm familiar with, Land Glide and uh, Onyx Maps for getting landowner information. So once you have the landowner information though, uh, your next step is, is uh, the most critical is actually going and getting permission. And uh, some of the things that I've, I've found helpful is, you know, just keep in mind that you're, you're asking for permission to, you know, access somebody's property. You know, this is somebody's property that, that's either their livelihood if it's a farmer or, uh, you know, it's somebody that's, that's spent a lot of money or, or is, has family ties to the land. So you got to keep that in mind. Make sure you're respectful and, uh, um, you know, you want to portray a, and to me, I want to portray a professional image. Um, you know, if, if you give somebody the impression that you're some jack leg trapper that's just going to come in and, and uh, run amok on their property, then that's not the image that you want to set. So, so I like to approach, you know, I like to dress nice, not, not a suit and penny loafers, you know, but I like to have a collared shirt on, clean clothes, tucked in, um, you know, give a first impressions, regardless of, you know, how things ought to be, first impressions are still what people are going to judge you by, right? If you come up there looking like a raggedy old trapper that just got done skinning a bunch of animals, then some people that may gain your credibility, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't stick to that. That wouldn't be my plan of attack. So in my, my, from my perspective, I typically try to look very nice, look very professional. Not necessarily my truck super clean, but I don't want blood dripping down it. And I mean, that's just an overall public perspective. I want, I want it to, you know, my truck, my vehicle to look nice. I want, to, I want to be very presentable, um, looking, and then just go knock on the door and uh, and and be willing to spend some time there. You know, you're asking people for permission. Like I said, you're asking for. Uh, them to give up some responsibility and let you on their property. So you don't want to be there for five minutes, yes or no, and then go on. You know, 
you got to be willing to take some time. Some people may be like that, but you know, my experience, especially when you encounter a, an older landowner, they like to sit and talk, you know, and, and maybe they don't talk to a lot of people on a regular basis. So, you know, if you've got 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour to sit there and talk and just, uh, you know, hear them out and explain something about yourself, then, uh, you know, that goes a long way. Because ultimately what you're doing, you're building a relationship with that landowner. And, uh, you know, you're wanting... I, presumably you're wanting to be access to that that property for the next 10 years not for the next two days so building that relationship goes definitely goes a long way so make sure you got time to, to spend with that landowner and uh, you know get to know get to know them and make sure they get to know you right uh, and another way that I like to approach is from from a professional aspect is I like to have a business card so I like to I like to have something that I can hand them that's got my contact information my name and phone number that way, if they do give me permission, if something goes wrong, if, if their dog's missing and they're worried about it, you know, they can give me a call and uh, and they've got they've got my information readily available. They're not trying to figure out how the heck they get a hold of me. Uh, and then also, you know, even if they don't give you permission, you slip them that card and, you know, maybe it starts weighing on them and then they have a beaver problem and they say, hey, you know, I got this guy I can call. Um, or they may pass it on to one of their friends that's complaining about something, you know, so. Uh, you know, really and truly having a couple of those to give out is not necessarily a bad idea. But And those are easy enough. You know, not everybody wants to have or, or needs to have, you know, professionally printed business cards. But you can get some pre-made templates and, and such from uh, Walmart or any, you know, Office Depot, Office Max. And uh, go through. It's really easy. You can go through their website and, you know, print up 10, 20. Let's see, this is nine sheets. This will make 90 cards. So... You know, that, that'd be plenty for most people for a couple seasons, so, um, you know, you can do that. It's a, it's a small investment, but like I said, it's going to give you a little bit of that professionalism and uh, hopefully gain you some credibility in, in their eyes. Um, and then another thing, you know, and, and I've read it in a thousand trapping magazines, but, you know, be willing to, to help out. Be willing to work. Make sure that they know that if they've got gates, you know, I'm going to keep the gates closed. Um, you know, I'm going to respect your property. If you see them out there bailing hay or or uh, you know working on a broke down tractor and you've got some time whoop in there and, and offer to give them a hand they may not take you up on it but there again that goes back to that relationship building and, and that uh, gaining credibility and, and uh, you know a little a little gesture like that can go a long way uh, and then once you once you actually get permission uh, you know you want to keep it for for years to come so uh, one of the ways that I like to do that is, is just by you know, providing the landowner with an update. Hey, you know, I caught this many animals, or send them a text, or send them a picture. Say, hey, you know, I caught this big male coyote today. He might be, you know, probably was chasing your calves or something like that. You know, because that that reinforces that you know what you're doing, and uh, and you know you can produce results, and and you're not just out there uh, jacking around doing who knows what. So that's that's things that have worked for me in the past so far as getting access to land and keeping that access to land. You know. Um, knowing who the landowner is, not not having to go up and, and knock on the door and just saying, "Hey, whose land is this?" and then uh, and then looking professional and uh, being being uh, courteous and respectful, and then you know giving the landowner updates, making sure they know you know I know what I'm doing, and uh, you know I'm trying to improve your property. I'm trying to provide a service to you while I'm out here. And, you know those few little things that main, building and maintaining that relationship will go a long way in making sure you get. Uh, land a trap in the future, so hope that helps some. Good luck.